That was the bed I slept in in his parents' house. How do you like my bed? That's a platinum bed. See, I mean, you guys think we, we wine and dine at these five-star hotels all the time. I'm going to tell you, whoever told you those stories, it's not true. It's not true. I mean, who's going to pay this price? Who's going to do this? You know what I'm saying? But this is what you've got to do. You've got to be willing to. I'm not saying this is going to be the way it is for you. I hope not. I hope you do end up staying at a five-star hotel. I hope that you, it's always that way for you. It wasn't that way for me a lot of times. A lot of times it wasn't. And I'm going to tell you, they had no air conditioning. And it was hot. And I had those wooden windows open. And I laid there sweating, hot, praying to God, saying, help me get through the night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not easy. Okay. And then this is my house in Guam. And am I, this was actually a penthouse that I had. Because at that time, we were going to fly the leaders over from Korea to Guam for the great escape. And I thought, well, I'll have them over at the house. And we'll have parties and things like that. And I'll entertain them. So it was quite a large suite. You know, this, it was. And you can see the view. And um, it was actually... Uh, we had a team on the island there, and so we would, I would have them over my house once a week. We would do what we call business receptions. Here's what that means. We got food, beer, wine, everything. And, but before we get into any of that, enjoying ourselves, we're going to hear a 30-minute presentation. That's right. So that's how we entertained on the island there. The thing was, I wasn't on the island that much, but that was my view from my balcony. Used to look out on that ocean and just really, oh, I loved it. I loved it. I wasn't there that much, but I, because I was always out traveling somewhere else and supporting somebody. People join MLM for money, but what keeps them with you is that you make them feel important. They won't stay with you for money, I promise you. They'll come in for money, but if you're going to keep that leader, you've got to make that leader feel special. And that's what we did. Here's the Philippines, Terry Shuler's group, getting it started then. Terry asked me one day when I uh, called me when I was in Guam. She said, will you fly to Manila and do a meeting? I've got a group. Well, I'd never been to the Philippines. I said, okay. So I flew over. I got to my room. I took a shower. I just had a towel around me. I heard a knock on the door. I opened the door, and there was about ten faces outside the door. And they said, we want to see you. <laughs> I said, yeah, I want to see you. Uh, not like this. Well, can, they said, well, can we come in? I said, not a good idea. I tell you what, give me five minutes. <laughs> they, were very, they were so excited. And this was Terry's original core group, getting started there. And we started doing meetings. I, hey, now, that, that looks real intelligent, doesn't it? Actually, I had, a, I had a leader take a picture of me. That's Terry Shuler's desk. You see those applications? <laughs> those are the applications that Terry collected from the leaders. I just wanted to make it look like I did the work. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was the woman. <laughs> it was the woman. We got some incredible women leaders in our organization. And that was the view from our office of the city in Manila. Fort Life wasn't there yet. And that's often what we did. What we did was we always set up our own office to support our leaders so that way we can, you know, get things done, do presentations. I also went with Terry to China. Terry had a Chinese group that took off. She said, do you want to go to China? Well, we've went everywhere else. Why not? Well, we went to China. When I spent probably on and off about three and a half months traveling all over China. And as you can see, that's the Great Wall of China. And me and Terry are uh, freezing to death. You know, I look pretty warm right there. <laughs> it was cold, let me tell you. And, uh, but it was an amazing experience to be able to meet with Chinese leaders. Here, um, here's Terry Schuler doing a presentation um, I think that's uh, above the North Korean line. We're right on the border. I'm talking about this is some serious stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you talk about a volatile area right there. But there's some leaders learning about for life and transfer factor. And then this is a group of Chinese leaders here. Some, I mean, we, I had so many pictures. There was, there was no way I could include them all. Here's Terry and Jan in Delhi. Uh, New Delhi, India, when we were up there doing meetings with Terry in India. Again, folks, it's all about running with your people, supporting with your, with your people, working through your team to identify those eagles. Look at your reports. Who's creating your volume? Who's doing most of the work? Who's doing the recruiting? Look at your reports. 
You gotta pay attention to that. Pick up the phone, call them, let them know that you, that you really appreciate what they're doing. Make sure they have your information, they know how to reach you. This is Sherry Den. When I started working with Sherry, I got a phone call from a lady who said, you know, I'm trying to get Sherry Den in this business. She's a, a really good networker, but I can't get her in. And I said, what's her phone number? I wrote her phone number. I said, I'll call her now. I called Sherry. I said, you don't know me and I don't know you and that's okay, right? But I'm coming to Singapore. I'm going to fly to Singapore. We were open in Singapore at that time. And I said, and I want to talk to you about Four Life. And I understand you're not interested. That's okay. But you know what? I love meeting leaders. And I like having lunch with leaders. Would you have lunch with me? And she said, yeah. Well, how can you turn that down, right? <laughs> That's right. And so I flew out to Singapore. She beat me up for two days. You know? I mean, leaders will do that. Potential leaders. They'll test you to see if you really do have a unique product. Or do you really have Or are you just another one of those MLMs? And Sherry found out we had the real thing. Dave Daughtry also came out and helped me on that, too, and I appreciate that. We all work together in supporting our leaders. And, and that was probably one of the early meetings. And you see uh, Sherry's to my right, and then, um, and then to her right is Sadiq. Sadiq is a gold international. To his right is Akram. He's a gold international diamond. That's right. Sherry told me in the next, within six months, she'll be a platinum, her and Sadiq. And I believe it, they're on track. They got over a one million LP that they hit in July. But when I started with Sherry and running with Sherry, you know, I found, and again, you men pay attention to this, I found working with women is different. Women leaders are different than men leaders. And, and I worked through this experience, and it was that way with Terry. Terry, you know, they, they, they they, they have this energy. They have, you know, they, they can come from a real emotional viewpoint of things. And so I, it, it took me a while to really learn how to adapt as a leader and, and do that. This is uh, Sherry, some of her leaders. And what Sherry would do with her leaders is she would have, like, parties, things like that. And then she would ask me to come over and support it. I ran all over Singapore and Malaysia with, Ter uh, with Sherry. You know, it takes, it takes a while to adapt to a new culture. But I was willing to do that. It fascinated me how people lived in that part of the world. And that was, hey, that's lunch. And, uh, and so uh, I can remember that also, you know, at times Sherry would have me over at her mother's house. What an honor. And uh, to get to know her family. So I'm going to, oh, my time's almost up. That's right. This is an important point here. Really? Yeah. This is an important point here. Sometimes supporting, sometimes helping means to get out of the way. Think about that. We take these leaders and we grow them from babies to great leaders. We carve them. We chisel them. We make them into something great. But you know what it's hard to do sometimes? It may, may be a challenge for you to let them go. That can be a challenge. They want their space. You think about eaglets. What does an eagle mother do? She kicks them out of the nest. When they're dropping in the air, she'll swoop down and catch them. Say, now you've got to learn how to do this. She'll put them back in the nest again. She'll do it again and again and again. Eventually, they learn how to fly. When your people learn how to fly, let them have their space. Let them have their legacy. I, remember, I, I can remember at times that you know some of our leaders would want to start their own team, have their own team name, their, home, their own team identity. Their upline wouldn't like that. No, you've got to stay in our team. You've got to stay with our team identity. But they wanted their space. You know, to me, it comes a point that we have to respect the way people want to do things and just let them go, let them fly. They don't want to fly in our shadow. And to me... Believe me, I love it when I see my leaders. When I, you know, when I see Arminio get up here, I see Juan get up here, and you know, other people that I that I've been privileged to be a part. We're all part of the same organization, and I can sit back and watch them go, watch them turn and burn. I'm thinking, excellent, <laughs> because that's what you want. Because if you're the only wheel turning, if you're the only one that can do the presentations, if you're the only one that can do the trainings, if that's the way it's going to be, I'm going to tell you right now, 
you are going to look like a president of the U.S. after four years in office. You're going to have a lot of gray hair and a lot of anxiety. And you're not going to like it. But if you want to be wealthy, you have to duplicate. That means you can't be the only eagle. I came to love Muslim people very much and respect them very much, as I do other religions and other cultures. But for a guy from Tennessee, it's quite new to me. It's quite a new experience if you've never been in those cultures to go there and it's different. But these are your leaders and you want to understand them. And so this was the beginning of Malaysia. And then, uh, then it took off. And then finally other leaders emerged. And, uh, and it just kept on growing and growing. So again, I think that's the last slide. A great leader will know when to step out of the way and let other leaders lead. See, this is what you want, my friends. You're all great leaders. All of you are great leaders. You have a great future in front of you. When I look at For Life right now and compare it to companies like New Skin, Amway, we're a small fish. They're a whale. Okay? Because they've been out there much longer than us, right? But look at the opportunity that you have. Imagine when For Life becomes a whale. Imagine that. Imagine if you apply yourself and apply these platinum principles in your business. How great it will be for you. Look at the people that you in, will enrich. Look at the people that you will mentor. Look at the lives that you will change. Look, most importantly, at what you will become as a person. I'm a totally different person now than when I started 11 years ago. I think Dave would agree with that. I mean, I've changed. Dave, I've watched Dave change. And, and, what's, and, and I'm not talking about the money. I'm not talking about the money. I'm talking about the person you become. It's wonderful. You will love it. And you'll love the people. You will love the people that you enrich. You will love to know their religions, their cultures, everything about them that makes the world we live in. It will change your life. For life changed my life. The education that I got from this was priceless. The relationships I've made are priceless. And then now, and this is, a, this is it. That's it. I want to thank all of you this day for coming here. And, you know, I know this, that um, once you experience these things, you never want it to end. And I promise you, I have no way have retired from this business. I talked to even Juan, uh, Juan and Erminio. I said, hey, wherever you guys want me to go to support you, you know, I love living back in the United States. I moved back one year ago after living in Asia five years. It's great to be back in America. It's great to be able to be on this side of the world and now where I can also support in other countries. These, you know, the leaders in this room are great leaders. I want to thank Erminio. I want to thank Juan Rosaro. I want to thank you, Golds. I want to thank you, you uh, International Diamonds. I want to thank you, Presidentials. I want to thank you, Diamonds and Leaders. Whoever you are in, in this room right now, I want to thank you for applying yourself. But the most important thing, if you could do anything for me, do this. Become an eagle. And teach your people how to fly. Become the eagle you want to be. Thank you.